Hi. Hi, I'm Danielle Dunnan, and today I'm going to be talking about Claudia Jones, who was a black communist radical organizer in the 20th century. Now, I chose um, to research Claudia Jones for my Black Transnationalism Honors Learning Community last semester because I enjoy a research challenge, and there's only three books ever written about Claudia, and these are the three books. Two of them are by the same author. So I like to think that I rose to the challenge by reading all three and by um, finding other research, particularly primary sources, by backtracking through the bibliographies of these three books, which was a tedious task. So this is Claudia Jones. She was born in 1915 in the Port of Spain in the British colony of Trinidad, but she immigrated to the United States at the age of eight and where her family settled in Harlem. And at the time, Harlem was a hub for Black Caribbean immigrants. So even though she only lived in Trinidad for eight years, she grew up with a lot of uh, direct Caribbean influences on her life. And growing up as a poor Black woman in the United States, Claudia became very conscious of how her race, her class, and her gender affected her opportunities in society. So in this presentation, I will be exploring Claudia Jones's transnationalism and the manifestations of this transnationalism through her duly and triply diasporized identity, living both living in Trinidad, the United States, and London, and through her involvement in the Communist Party, her deportation, her newspaper, the West Indian Gazette, and the carnival she founded, the Notting Hill Carnival in London. If none at all, Claudia Jones is most known for her involvement in the Communist Party of the United States, abbreviated CPUSA. She joined the Young Communist League as a teenager because of its support for the Scottsboro Boys and opposition to the Italian invasion of Ethiopia. Both of these cases were symbols of Black strength on the international stage, something was, Claudia was really passionate about. Her communist beliefs were deeply tied to her beliefs in a Black international liberation. So, Claudia rose through the ranks of CPUSA quickly. She became secretary of the Women's Commission within the party and uh, eventually became editor for a radical newspaper, The Daily Worker. Through her time in the Communist Party, she learned how to effectively organize and radicalize working class people, particularly Black Caribbean immigrants like herself. Eventually, in 1948, as a part of the McCarthy era, the FBI and CIA took notice of Claudia, Claudia and her subversive activities. With, under the Smith Act, which was an alien and sedition act, they were able to deport Claudia. And even though she hadn't been to Trinidad since she was eight years old, she was scheduled to be deported there until the colonial governor of Trinidad said that she would be too troublesome and asked her for her not to be sent there. So since Trinidad was part of the British colonial empire, she was instead sent to London. She was deported to London. Arriving in London, Claudia was motivated and ready to apply her skills organizing black immigrant communities. Especially at the time of her arrival, London was experiencing a surge of black Caribbean immigration, particularly to the Notting Hill and Brixton neighborhoods. There had never been a black newspaper in London to ever have reached the high newsstands alongside the white newspapers, but using her experience and connections in the black radical organizing community that she already had, uh, Claudia founded the West Indian Gazette and Afro-Asian Caribbean News, which became one of the most successful um, black newspapers in England of ethnicity. She was able to build a wide readership across a variety of races and ethnicities in London and all over the world. Um, the West Indian Gazette brought a sense of community to Caribbean immigrants in London. It provided mutual aid and it uplifted black artists, musicians, poets, and writers that weren't given opportunities by the white media. It updated Londoners on the goings-on of the Caribbean and, and was overall a very transnational newspaper with a focus on both London, the West Indies, the Caribbean, and immigrants all over the world that came from those places. Now, the West Indian Gazette represented the intellectual side of Claudia Jones's organizing in London, but the Notting Hill Carnival was the physical manifestation of all of this. The Notting Hill Carnival, or Carnival, is a traditional, is a traditional Caribbean street festival with music, dancing, food, and masquerade. She originally founded it 
be very small indoors at a place called St. Pancras Hall, seen here. But over time, it grew to be a large international event that brought together people of all races in London, and now, even throughout the world, it attracts people from all over the world. The important historical context for understanding why she founded this is that during the 1950s, at the time when she founded it, London was experiencing a surge in white supremacy with organizations and political parties like the White Defense League with Oswald Mosley that were going on that would bring together mobs of white people to go through the immigrant neighborhoods of Brixton and Notting Hill and would rob and burn and kill innocent non-white immigrants, particularly Caribbean black people. Claudia created the Notting Hill Carnival in response to all of this terror in white supremacy. She wanted to bring together people of all races and celebrate Caribbean culture in a time when people were being targeted for that. Now, Carnival is not just a fun street festival. It's fun and it's a street festival, but it has a deeply anti-colonial history and bringing that to London was extremely important and really demonstrated Jones's transnationality because Carnival was originally founded in Trinidad, where Claudia's from, and it was founded in 1834 to celebrate the abolition of slavery in Trinidad. And it was actually banned for many years by the British colonial government. So bringing it to London, the center of the British Empire, was a symbol of resistance. So the Notting Hill Carnival, along with the West Indian Gazette, are the culmination of Jones's transnational identities as a Trinidadian, an African-American, a deported radical, a descendant of the African diaspora, and a citizen of the British Empire. Even though she spent just nine years in England, her organizing there, especially the Notting Hill Carnival, were extremely influential, and the Notting Hill Carnival has become one of the most well-known and well-attended carnivals in the world. So, to wrap this up, the West Indian Gazette and the Notting Hill Carnival were the results of the transnational fusion of Jones's experiences in Trinidad in the United States and in poor Caribbean immigrant communities in both Harlem and London. Though she's most remembered for the Notting Hill Carnival, she also made significant contributions to communist and black feminist thought, particularly through her proposition of the concept of intersectionality more than 40 years before the term intersectionality was officially coined. She brought gender and race, in addition to class, into the forethought of the Communist Party. Today, Claudia Jones is not as well known as she should be, even in leftist organizing and intellectual spaces, but she secured her place in history. She is buried in London's Highgate Cemetery in the grave site right there to the left of Karl Marx, which symbolizes how her ideas were even more revolutionary than Marx.